So I caught a moment before I have Keith introduce who this is, man. I love how, like, with the whole instrumental process, people be vibing to the instruments. I almost feel like the music bands make it comfortable to set the mood for the inter interviews and all that stuff. And what people don't know is, and I would say that's those of you that's ever on live is, is that, man, okay. So, you know, when we go live, we don't want you guys hearing anything but really you know, the artists that's on and their music and all that stuff. And it's really, the instrumentals are a really transitional thing. So that way, when we go live, people hear that, it sets the tone, the artists come in, we come in and everything. And what's be so crazy is people be asking, man, yo, who made that beat? And what people don't know is I just randomly go on YouTube and try to find some things that I don't <laughs> think Facebook or YouTube is going to get me in trouble. That's what I randomly just do. You show love to some random different people. Sometimes they only have their name on that. They just be like an hour of instr in instrumental music. And I'm like, oh, that sounds good. Let me listen to what they got. <laughs> <laughs> but it's Future Radio. <laughs> Bryce, this is it. Oh, I see us, Keys, man. Keys, tell us about this guest that we got today. Okay, so like I told y'all, we got a lot of we had a lot of great people that came in today. First, we started off with Doc Keys, you feel me? female artist she came in did her thing then we had my boy time from O'Shea apparel he came in did his thing showed us some of his good clothes now we finna end it off with my boy swing sinatra you feel me so it's crazy because i met him through somebody else but it's like we still continued our, our bond we still continue like doing business and stuff like that so you know i had to have bro come on the show you feel me we had his at we had him as one of our artists of the week you feel me he was in the beginning like when we first started off doing that so I thought to myself, I'm like, man, one of these days we got to bring bro on the show. So today is that day. So welcome to Fusion Radio, my boy. Thank you. Thank you, man. How y'all feeling? Man, feeling good, man. You know, uh, I'm going to bring this out. The cat out of the bag is, is that, man, what's so, like, really great about this is that I can tell you this is I actually did a voiceover commercial, and you were one of the artists that were featured in this commercial, produced the commercial, had to do snippets of the artist song. I mean, everybody was, was was dope on the lineup and everything. And my girl Mary J was like, "Man, can you voice that for me and put that together?" And I remember going through so many different songs of yours. All of them was dope, man. And trying to narrow down what we could play, you know, because it was about at least minimum five artists that were performing and trying to fit that all into sixty seconds, man. And, Definitely was a challenge, man, because like it was so many dope artists. Jujella right. was part of that concert. And so uh I wanna go back before we even get into with you and talk about that concert. I know it was a while back, man, but man, like what you brought, you know, on, on stage, man, bring us in with that. And this was the um the concert back in December, right? Right. Yeah, that was man, it was a beautiful thing. Me and Mary J, we locked in, you know, I help her outside of music, I do graphic design. So it was cool to lock in with her with that. But in return, you know, she let me go up there and perform. We uh, did the cypher. And just from that day, it was crazy, man. Just from the start to finish, like being at the promontory for the first time and getting up there and doing my thing. And it, it was dope, man. So I, I wouldn't have had it any other way. It was cool to network, you know, see different artists, meet different artists from the city. So, yeah, it was pretty dope. Pretty dope show. That's what I'm talking about, man. So. I never really got a chance to ask this man this question, even though, like, you feel me? Like I said, we've been rotating, doing business, doing music and stuff together. But I want to start off with this name, you feel sure. me? So Swing Sinatra, like, how did that come to part? And, like, how did you really put that together, though? Man, so for one, the great Frank Sinatra, we all know, man. Fly Me to the Moon, Chicago, everything. But also, it was, like, a turning point for me in music a couple years back when I was really getting into it. I, um... I guess I hit the point where I wanted to be a little more lyrical in my, my songwriting. So I rapped to a song called Hillary Swank by Joey Badass. And, uh, so, but amazing artist, you know what I mean? And that beat and just everything I was doing behind it from what he was doing, it was like, I don't know, it was just something about it. And then obviously just the name Swank, it was cool. I had a different rap name back then. I was going by, uh, Young B. James and, uh, Swank was just a cool name. I was saying Swank Gang. Wanted to call myself that. And then obviously bringing in the Sinatra was like a play on Frank. So that's how it came about. So, like, what was it, like, as far as your name that made you really want to switch, though? Because, like you said, you started off as one thing and then yeah. you ended up changing it to Swank. So, like, what was it that really made you be like, okay, I want to do something different. I want to change it. Was it like you changed as an artist or, like, what was it really going on at that point in time that really made you want to change? I say it's two things. For sure, it was definitely me changing as an artist. I feel like I was improving. 
not only in you know my songwriting and everything, but I wanted something that reflected that, something more clean, you know, simple, not essentially a simple name, but just something that's more clean, that looks nicer. Um, I felt like at the time my old name was getting a little too childish as I was also getting older at the same time. And Swank was always something that I wanted to stick with. And I just loved the Swank name. I just liked that it was, you know, cool. And the Sinatra just made sense with, you know, it being just like Frank Sinatra. And I just thought it was cool. So definitely, yeah, just like that. Okay, okay, okay. So like you said, you transition into a different type of artist. And at the same time, a, a different type of person too, though. So mm -hmm. like, what is that type of sound? And what's that type of like artist that you're trying to give off? Like, what's a certain type of message in your music that you're trying to give off? I can say for sure, just versatility. I feel like I can do a lot of things, you know, on songs, whatever beat, you know, whatever genre. So this was me stepping into more of more of what I can do now in comparison to before, like trying to stick to these specific styles and trying different things out to where, okay, I finally found my niche and like, you know, I like rapping like this, I like rapping like that, but now it's to a point where it's like, okay, you skilled at what you do, you should be able to do whatever, you know what I mean? And that just kind of went into the into the name change as well. Just you know, new name, same same person, but now I'm elevated. It's totally different now. For sure, man. For sure. And like I told y'all, I didn't. I've been rotating with bro. We've been having conversations. We even did a song together and stuff like that too. So like, this name of the song that we did is called "Moment for Life." You feel me? Like, cause at the time, at the point in time when I first came out with the song, what I wanted to do was I wanted to come up with like a a throwback Thursday, you feel me, like, tape in some type of way. So, like, what I wanted to do was, I'm like, man, like, I came up with the song myself, but I had another verse on it. So I was thinking, I'm like, man, who could I put on this song that was going to match what I was trying to do as far as, like, being lyrical and, like, trying to give off a certain type of message. So the only person that I could really think about was bro. So I'm like, okay, let me send it to bro. Let me see if he could actually rock with it and see if he could flow with it. And then let me see what he sent me back. And let me see if I... Like, if I rock with it. So, like, just take, just, like, explain to the people your whole mindset behind that Pacific track. Like, what type of message you was trying to give off and, like, how did you look at it when I first sent it to you? Uh, well, for one, picking picking that track, and everybody know the Moment for Life track, Nicki Minaj, it's a, it's a great song, you know. We, we rock with Nicki, you know what I'm saying? Sure. And um, I think, for one, me hearing it and hearing, like, the message you was coming across from it from, you know, starting off young, getting older, responsibilities, and then doing the music on top of that, it was just... It took, you know, for me to, you know, address that same thing, you know, where I feel like even more in certain songs, I should, you know, start talking about more real stuff, you know, my life and things like that. So you helped me, in a sense, tap into that, you know what I'm saying? So that was my mindset for sure. You know, it was a more serious song. Obviously, we're going to still be lyrical and have fun and everything, but telling the story was really important on that one, so. For sure. I even had to, in some type of way, explain that to my own people, like, because they was listening to it and they couldn't really rock with it. And I'm like, why y'all not rocking with it? But I had to understand as an artist and as a person who I was talking to, too, though. Because, mm -hmm. like, a lot of people don't understand, like, everybody not going to like every song you do. Right. And then everybody not going to understand every song that you make because I'm not saying that, like, that Pacific song was at a different frequency, but you had to have a certain type of mindset and mm -hmm. be on a certain type of time to really understand what we was talking about in that song. Right. Like, it wasn't just no gang gang shoot them up or just like jumping around in the party right, like turned right. up song it wasn't that's not the message i was trying to give off i was like you said i was trying to give off a real serious a real like trying to explain certain things in the song you feel me like so that's why when you sent it back and you gave out that same type of vibe i'm like okay it's the same type of vibe but he came in his way though you don't sound like me you sound like swank on that song and right. that's what i love about doing features with certain people because they bring out a different element but they still match what i was trying to do on the song you feel right, me? So right, right. i definitely want to like say i appreciate you for actually doing the song you feel me so for sure stuff like that so like as far as like in general like like how you said you try to be versatile and stuff like that but as far as like your different flows and the different things that you bring to the table what's your favorite though like as far as like okay if you want somebody to know who Swank is and what type of artist they is, what type of style would you get that person to really listen to? Like, okay, this is really Swank. This is the message that I really want to give up. Uh, For real, it's knowing that at the end of the day, whatever style I'm doing, I want people to know I can rap. You know what I'm saying? So, like, lyrical songs, things like that, I would definitely showcase um, just songs where they hear the verse. And even if it's, like, a two-verse song, three-verse song, they hear one of them verses and they like, 
man, you got bars, you know what I'm saying? Like you, you spitting like, and I, and I put that in account to, you know, just my, and I'm sure we'll go into, but like my people, you know what I'm saying? Putting me on a certain artist growing up and just knowing that like, I can still be lyrical even in this new age, you know, new era of music. So for sure to definitely be just showing us I can rip a 16, you know what I'm saying? So, so let's build on that, man. Who's them artists that you, uh, got on your bucket list of artists that like, man, they inspire me to want to spit that way. Man, to be honest with you, it's, it's so many. Cause I was never like, I was never not given different artists to listen to. It's like my parents, they put me on it like from 50 Cent to TI to Lil Wayne to Jay Z to, Three Six Mafia to UGK, you know what I'm saying? The list goes on for sure, for sure. Like for me, the most is like most influential to me is like those like Drake, Wayne, Kanye West for sure, Jay Z, Fifty Cent, like them stand like my most influential for me at least for sure, for sure. So we got two songs from you, man. Feature that greatness from you, man. Uh, one is actually entitled After Dark. The other one is entitled My Rest, man. Which one you want to play first? Oh, uh, we can go with the After Dark first. That's a um, cold uh, Jill Scott sample from our brother Mickey C. Beats. So I think y'all rock with that for sure. Give us a little bit of uh, inspiration behind uh, what was uh, what were you thinking when you created this one? So Jill Scott, with uh, the song we had got sampled, is one of my favorite Jill Scott songs. Um, and I asked him one day, like, can you, can you sample this for me? And, of course, you know, without a doubt, you know, he said, you know, I got you. And he made it hard, bro. And from that point, I just want to do a play on words, like a new new era version of that song and make it my own. And it was fun to make. So I think y'all rock with it for sure. We sit up every day, wait, and after dark, so I'm swinging more, so I know to keep it real. I mean, I'm walking on these things, you never thinking what you saw, wait, you're speaking like I talk, wait, you're freaking out the park, wait, and I'm beaming at the start, and probably dreaming for the dark, yeah. probably thinking that I'm tweaking, but I'm seeking greater thoughts, wait. so I'm knowing that I got it, I don't leave it out in parts, wait, they can't help it when I spit, it ain't nothing cooler than me, the conversation, baby, probably is something you want to be, something you probably count up and think if you wanted me, cause it's so much the energy, baby. To the ground is trying to make the bigger leagues. Trying to make it what it seems, so comprehending what I mean. The only one that understands me is the one I really need. And they try to tell me different, now we walking down the street. With the sounds moving quiet, but we grooving with our feet. Trying to make it what it seems, so comprehending what I mean. The only one that understands me is the one I really need. And they try to tell me different, now we walking down the street. With the sounds moving quiet, but we grooving with our feet. Let's take a walk, wait, blow up blood and spark, yeah. We sit up every day, wait, and after dark, so I'm a smoke and more, so I know to keep it raw. I mean, I'm walking on these things, you never think it what you saw, wait. You're speaking like I talk, wait. But I'm freaking out the park, wait. And I'm beaming at the start, and probably dreaming for the dark, yeah. Probably thinking that I'm tweaking, but I'm seeking where the thoughts are. I'm knowing that I got it, I don't give it out in parts. I just pull up out the whip, and she says she wanna do it. No, I've been a lot of places, you should never ever trip. You should never ever suck.
That's what I'm talking about, man. That's that good music, man. That's that type of music I like to listen to. No shade to nobody else or nothing like that, but that's what we call lyricism. You feel me? Like I feel like a lot of people didn't got away from lyricism and just make these club bangers and stuff like that. When we gonna bring the real bars back, man? So for you to come in and bring something like that, I appreciate that. That's what I like to hear right there. So like, let's talk about that a little bit. Like as far as like just how you go about making music though, because you know, with you being from Chicago and stuff like that, you know, all the big artists, not saying like they not lyricists or they can't go to that type of level, but it's like, that's not really what put them on though, you feel me? Yeah. So like, why do you choose to go that route instead of like, go like the other route, like the gang gang shoot them up, you feel me? That type of route, like most people in the city try to go. I feel like it's, it's the realism thing. Like I didn't, I didn't grow up like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I don't got no reason to talk about it. You know what I mean? Like talk about what I really know and some of the techniques that I learned based off the music that I was shown growing up. You know what I'm saying? That's all it is. You know what I'm saying? Being real with myself at the end of the day. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. That man hit it on the head. Yes, the realism. Can y'all start keeping it real? Because I ain't going to lie to you. I listen to a lot of people's songs, and it don't be sounding real at all. Like, it be sometimes it be sounding like people be talking about stuff that they don't know nothing about. Mm -hmm. And then, like, just, like, coming from a, a fellow artist, like, especially when you do certain things and you move a certain type of way, and you know a certain person don't move that type of way, and that's what they trying, that's the message that they giving off, and that's what they talking about, mm -hmm. it kind of like, it kind of irritates you, but at the same time, as an artist, it kind of like make you mad a little bit, because it's like, okay, I actually led this life, and I know what I'm talking about, and this is the only reason why I'm talking about this stuff, because I actually go through this. But for you to be talking about certain things that you don't know nothing about or not really living, it's like, it takes away the authenticity mm -hmm. of music, you feel me? So for you to say that you don't live a certain type of way and you don't move a certain type of way so you don't talk about those type of things, I appreciate that because I feel like a lot of people don't be living what they be talking mm -hmm. about in their raps. And then when they get exposed, they be looking crazy like, oh, man, why you put me out there like that? Right. Why you putting yourself out there like that? Exactly. So it's like, man, I, I love that you want to keep it real with yourself because I don't know why people feel like you got to put on a certain type of image to make it in music. You exactly. Know? I don't know why it's like that, though. <laughs> so, like, one thing I want to get into, though, is like, okay, I want to I want to turn it into your producer. You feel me? Mickey C. You feel sure. me? Because when I first met you, it's, it was kind of like, uh, like a joint demo type, um, type thing. Like, I heard about him at the same time I heard about you. So mm -hmm. it was like... So let's talk about that connection and like how you guys go about making music because that's one thing I learned about when it comes to like my little trials and tribulations going through the years. Like when you really lock in with a certain type of person as far as like either it's an engineer, camera guy, or like just anybody as far as like in the industry when you moving and doing music, like those are the best relationships. So mm -hmm. let's just, just talk to us a little bit about your relationship with Mickey C and, and how it be when y'all be in the studio making music together. Man, if I go through... Go to like the very beginning, man. We uh went to high school together. His older brother, the same grade as me, uh, three years younger than me. But um, obviously still musically talented. We were in band together. I was playing the drums. He was a wind instrument. Wind instrument. Um, but it was like just being locked in through the relationship we had through his brother, and then um us hanging out more so when I graduated high school. We had another friend who the both of them came down to uh the college I was going to at the time, NIU. Um, I was showing them my presses at the time because I was just recording off Garage Band in my room, you know what I'm saying, getting beats off YouTube, but I was still doing what I love to do at the end of the day. But, you know, they saw that. We, uh, we made a song together just so they can just get in that mode with me just to see what it was like. And then it was like after that, bro, Mickey C said he wanted to start making beats. And I was with him, you know, from that moment on. You know what I'm saying? As he got better, I got better at the same time. So I take that, you know, real deep. And then, you know, we went to the professional studios together for the first time. You know, we've been locked in at certain places of our own space. We can call our own, you know, for the first time together. And now it's like it's like second nature. You know what I'm saying? He know what type of beats I want to rap on. But he also pushes me and sends me different things to see what I can do on them. And my goal every time we lock in is just, OK, he made the beat. He, his part is over with. Now it's like, all right, what can I do to impress him with what I'm finna lay on these songs? You know what I'm saying? And that's that's the coolest thing about it. Just seeing his reaction every time we make something new. I see. That's one thing I like about what you said was y'all been locked in so long that he know what you want to rap on, but at the same time, he's still seeing you things to push you and to, like, make you be better as an artist. Because, like, 
that's that's what I was basically kind of explaining to like the first artist that came in. You feel me? Like when it comes to your circle and the people that's around you, you can't have no yes men around you right. when you are artist, especially in this industry. You feel me? As far as being an entertainer and stuff like that, because you always want to be better, because you can always get better. You can never right. get to a certain point and feel like. You can't get better mm -hmm. or you can't switch it up or you can't do something different. Right. That's the whole purpose of being an artist because you're not a rapper. Like a lot of people, I feel like a lot of people just rappers. You feel mm -hmm. me? They just rap on one type of beat, yeah. one type of flow. Like, no, nah, we out here trying to be artists. We're trying to do different things, like going to different avenues, different, like, you feel me? Different flows, all different type of stuff. So it's like, so like. When he try to push you to do different things, like, do it be to the point where it's super hard or do it be to the point where, like, you just really getting out your comfort, comfort zone with saying certain things or doing certain things? Yeah, it's definitely uh, getting out the comfort zone and just knowing that, like, you know, I can do it. And I never push myself. He doesn't, like, force anything with me, you know what I'm saying? But, like, not saying I don't push myself. I don't force nothing. But I push myself because I know what I can do, you know what I'm saying? And I want to continue to prove myself and get better at the same time, so... It's nothing ever for us, and it's always like it's never like he's sending, showing me something that's bad. You know what I'm saying? Like even if it's not for me, we you know the next artist will get it and, and go crazy on it. But if it's something that like is hard and I've never done it before, every time I'm gonna try to do what I can on there. And my same common goal is hopefully that he hears it and he's like, "Hey man, you just went crazy!" Like every time, like, I want to blow him away every time. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about, man. So. Next thing I want to talk about, I want to talk about these projects, you feel me? Because I know you got a couple projects out there. So, like, how many projects do you have out as far as, like, right now at this moment? At least five or six, I want to say. Off the top of my head, five or six. Five or six. So, out of the five and six that you know, you feel me, that yeah. you could think about at the top of your head, what's that one project that low-key stand out to you, though, you feel me? Because, yeah. you know, like, certain projects stand out more based off who listening to it like what's on there what type of vibes and stuff like that but as far as like you being a creator and you putting it together what like real mixtape or album that you have put out what really sticks out to you and you be like okay i like this a little bit more than i like the other ones you know that's a great question um it's definitely a few but i would say if i had to single one out it would probably be one of my most recent ones and that was uh the big swank project and that was dope because it was like 10, 11 songs. I had a, a few different features on there from singers to a female artist. That was my first time working with one in general. So, and just the process behind it, we had already, you know, worked on two, three projects with each other prior to that. You know, I worked on a project with a, with a different producer, but we came back for the big swing and that was our most recent one. And just off the experiences we had and just the studio sessions, the late nights, you know what I'm saying? The four plus hour sessions, just being in there locked in. It was something about that project. I just like the cohesiveness from it. You know what I'm saying? It's not too long. It's not too short. And the songs all flow together. Mm. That's what I'm talking about, man. This next question I'm going to ask you, though. I It's so crazy now that I think about it. I haven't really asked nobody this question in a little minute. But with you being, with you having this music career and you've been doing music for so long, you, I know you got a lot of knowledge. I know you got a lot of gems. I know that. Like, you know a lot as far as being an artist and gen, like and stuff like that. So, what we like to do here on Fusion Radio, you feel me? I got a segment called, you feel me, Classes and Sessions, you feel me? So, like, I want you to drop a little sauce, drop a little jams. But what I want you to basically do is give some advice to a younger artist or somebody that's just starting being an artist. Because I feel like a lot of people ain't getting guided. Like, because when I first came in the game, even now, I don't have that one person that's telling me, like, okay, you need to move like this, you need to do this. Right. Like, I had to learn everything I learned just all going through the trials and tribulations, bumping my head along the road, you feel me? Yeah. So, like, what's some advice that you could give a young artist or a, a new inspiring artist that's out here trying to do what you've been doing for years? Man, the most thing I, like, it, and it's not even to be, like, cliche in a sense, but just don't stop, you know what I'm saying? Like, we all have our moments to where, even when I first started, I was nowhere near as skilled as I am now back then. But you got to understand, like, the process, the beauty, the, the beautiful thing behind it. Like, you don't get to become better at what you do without doing, you know, that step, those, those steps to get better. Sure. So just understanding, like, you know, you might not be the greatest when you start off. However, if you continue to put the work in, have a positive mindset, and keep pushing it to reach your goal, you'll get better with time. That's, that's With anything, you'll get better with time. So that's, like, the most cliche thing I like you know what i'm saying it's kind of cliche but it's like it's the truth like just keep doing keep perfecting your craft keep going and at the end of the day like 
you'll see the improvement as you continue to, to rise up. Hey, yo, turn it up. Broadcasting live from the Illinois Institute of Technology. We got you locked into Fusion Radio, 88.9 FM. For sure, man. That's what I'm talking about. I ain't gonna lie. We've been having a great conversation. Definitely been a great conversation. You feel me? I've been able to really sit down and ask you certain questions that I never really had time to really sit down and ask you. So, like, with all the accomplishments that you have accomplished so far in your career, what's one that stand out to you that be like, okay, I was really proud to have done this or have gone through this as far as being an artist? Hmm. That's a... A couple, man. Um, I would say between going to perform at the Promontory for the first time, that was pretty dope, you know, a profound, uh, you know, venue, as well as going out to the Wild Hair and performing there. But um, I think it was, I did a Juneteenth performance two years ago, and mm. uh, shout out to YK Soup, but, uh, you know, he, he made sure I got on stage to do so. And I remember, like, the day of, I had all my people in, my family, my friends, Mickey C was there, and... Um, it was three, three, four other artists who were supposed to go up before me and they weren't there. So I had to go up there and open the show, essentially. And I remember I went up there by myself and it was like a couple minutes into the first song. All my homies got on stage with me and it, we just we just rocked out. And it was just a, one of those moments. It was like for me, it's like especially for like the people that see me doing this. When you're in that moment with me, whether it's a studio session or on stage with me, you may not have believed it beforehand, but now you're seeing it. Now you're really seeing what I'm trying to accomplish. And just from that moment on, that year, like from that performance, I did like four, five more, and it was just, it was just a great year. So I definitely say that performance like got me like hungry to continue doing it for real, for real. Okay, okay. So like, let's build on that. So like, it seemed like in some type of way you like performing. You feel me? So like, what could we expect when we think of Swing Sinatra as far as being a performing artist and stuff like that? Like, what could I be in store for when we think about those type, those type of things? Uh, just the energy. You know, being able to keep you entertained while on stage, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm going to bring the music at the end of the day, but, you know, I want to be up there moving around the stage. You know, you get better with that, you know, with time. I've gotten better with that myself from being stagnant and not moving on stage to getting the crowd, in, you know, engaged and moving back and forth. So definitely just energy, you know, great music, and, you know, I'm going to rock it every time. That's what I'm talking about, man. Great vibes, man. You got to bring that energy when it comes to performing, man. You got to make people want to, you feel me, actually listen to your songs because what people don't understand is a lot of times when you go out performing, especially if you're not like a certain type of artist, they might not know your song. Mm -hmm. So like if you're not bringing a certain type of energy, why would they want to sit up there and listen to you? Exactly. Or why would it get to the point where somebody will want to pay you for a show or pay to come see you if you if they don't already know that you're bringing a certain type of energy? So. Right. I definitely understand what you mean by that. So just before we got up at, get up out of here, man, we got this last song, man. It's called My Wrist. You feel me? So just talk to us a little bit about My Wrist. You feel me? What's the message you're trying to give off in that? And then, like, what was the whole, like, build up behind that and, like, how you put it together and stuff like that? Man, My Wrist is a cool song. Another example of me just showing off my versatility and it being a little different from something I normally do. Uh, Mickey C, I took a trip out to Cali came back with this beat, you know, this West Coast vibe beat, and I was like, you know, let's do it. I had never done anything like it, and we was locked in, you know, our regular late night sessions, and we made it happen, so I think y'all will rock with this for sure. This is my wrist. That's what I'm talking about, man, so I ain't gonna lie. We always have a great time when we get a chance to come in the studio and we get a chance to meet these great people, man, these great businesses and stuff like that, so I just wanna I want to thank everybody that tuned in today, you feel me, and definitely rocking with us and stuff like that, because without y'all, we won't be nothing. So, man, we finna go ahead and get into this My Wrist by Swing Sinatra, and just stay tuned with us, man, and definitely be in tune for Monday morning, man, when we drop that, that this week's Artist of the Week, man, but for sure. Yeah. Right with a couple models, nice size, new vibes, and the fit to follow. Know I got big ties, like I hit the lotto. To the DJ spin, my I sniff in that bitch. I'm married, and my wrist don't sit up. Switch on bliss, shorty blowing me a kiss. It's hard to tell a lie when you living like this. I'm living like switch, every day another hit. 
and Mickey on the beat, you know he got a sixth sense, yo. Roll another one, and hit that, they don't make sense, huh? All about your engines, up, we're trying to defense. Why? Throws up on my chum, this if you wanna do a spin, yeah. We been pulling up a different way when it ends. Get it out the mud, working hard in the gym. Ay. Looking at the wrist, that watch it got a big red. When Jay told me keep it smooth, damn, I had to listen. What? He said, well, if you with it, this a pocket you can fit it. Right. I'm plotting on the million, everything I do is different. Yeah. So even when I finish, they gon' always know we did it. Why? Young swing, baby, I can fit in every picture. What? My aura too big, I be feeling like a winner. Yeah. Young swing, baby, I can fit in every picture. What? My aura too big, I be feeling like a winner. Yeah. Like this. Right. 